Welcome to another episode of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah, and this is a podcast all about crochet, a little bit of knitting, sometimes sewing, and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. How are you? It has been two weeks. I am very tired. <laughs> I would like to say that I'm full of energy and super excited, but it's 8.30 in the morning, and I've been awake since 4.30 through no fault of even Nova's, although she was up at 5.30, which is an hour earlier than normal. So I'm a little tired. I kind of have a headache. Anytime I get up before 5.30 or 6, I typically end up with a headache that day. No idea why. It's just my body's way of saying, hey, you shouldn't be awake right now. So I have a little bit of sugar. <laughs> this is white peach ginger ale that my husband found at the store recently. It is freaking delicious. So if you live in a place, I personally do not think Schweppes is a very good base ginger ale. Sue me. I think Seagram's is much better. And then Schweppes and then Canada Dry. Um, but the white peach Schweppes is utterly fantastic. I'm hoping that the sugar will get into my bloodstream <laughs> and I will have so much energy to do this podcast and then also, you know, survive for the rest of the day because I have kind of all kinds of things to do today. So I have a few things to talk to you about today. I actually have started two new projects. I know. And I, of course, what am I wearing? But first, if you're looking for me anywhere on the interweb, you can find me as the Cozy Cottage Crochet on Instagram. That's where I'm most active, although I don't think I've made a grid post in quite a while. Um, I have been posting pretty regularly to stories. So if you want Nova updates, that is where you need to follow me is on Instagram because in my stories, I post at least a couple of times a week pictures of her. Yesterday, I posted a picture of her just ripping up grass in the front lawn. Oh, so cute. So yeah, The Cozy Cottage Crochet on Instagram. I'm also The Cozy Cottage on Ravelry. We do have a Ravelry group for this podcast, although we're not <laughs> currently running any giveaways or make-alongs or anything like that other than the Mission Impossible Now, which is just ongoing indefinitely until I finish my Skyrim cardigan. We will eventually get back to running make-alongs. I just don't have the bandwidth to do that right now because... um babies. Babies are hard work. And then if you need to contact me for any reason about the podcast, specifically questions, comments, concerns, please shoot me an email. That's the best way to get a hold of me. I'll put my email on the screen. It is the cozy cottage crochet at gmail.com. Cool. One more drink. What am I wearing? Ah, let me tell you a story. <laughs> I pulled this out specifically to wear on the podcast because I love it. I love it so much. I used to wear it all the time. I have worn almost no crochet and any knitting or like yarn related things except for um, a black Kyler shawl that a beautiful, lovely patron of this podcast named Amanda made for me. I've worn that a couple of times, but other than that, I haven't worn it anything yarn related really outside of the podcast because Nova <laughs> constantly needs like stimulation in her fingertips. Like she is a sensory seeking baby, not like for the rest of her body. She just wants to touch and, and everything. And she like does this all the time. She scratches, she grabs, she pulls. So anything I'm wearing that even remotely has a hole in it, which all crochet and knitting does, she gets her fingers in and just yanks it. And she'll just sit there and be like, <laughs> and you know, I'm doing this with my whole fist, so it's not damaging this, but... <laughs> I cannot bear the thought of her like ripping a hole in this or stretching out the stitches in some way that I can't fix it. So I've just resigned myself to not, you know, wearing <laughs> yarn when she's around for a little while until she grows out of that. So when I pulled this out this morning to wear specifically on the podcast and I was like, oh, I'm so excited because I used to wear this all the time. This is my Chelsea cardigan. It is a pattern by Vicki Chan. I have made three of her cardigans. Is this the Chelsea? Dang it. <laughs> I have made the Ariana cardigan, which is like a blue lace cardigan. There, I'm pretty sure this one's the Chelsea. It's on my Revelry page. And then I have made one more. Maybe that one was the Chelsea. Oh no, this is like the worst podcast <laughs> fail of all time because I can't remember what I'm wearing. I think this is the Chelsea. I'm like, pretty sure this is the Chelsea cardigan. But basically you make it actually from the bottom up and it's one huge 
mesh lace panel that just takes forever and ever and ever and I made it take way longer than necessary because my gauge was super tiny because I was using wool like yarn which is an acrylic nylon blend instead of the fingering weight cotton that she calls for so I basically had to like double the amount of mesh I needed to make and then you do this attached ribbing all the way around which also takes forever because it's in the third loop it's one of these like patterns that you make for the product the finished object in my opinion if you love making mesh then this pattern is for you but i didn't super enjoy working on this but i do super enjoy the finished object so as you can see it's a cardigan it goes this is my hip right here so it goes pretty much to below my butt i could have done with it being like three inches longer maybe it was blocked to the point that i wanted it but it kind of like shrunk back up a little bit but i love it it's so soft it's so lightweight wool like is great yeah I'm a fan of this. If you want, I, I like lace cardigan patterns. Biggie Chan is where it's at. I have made three of hers. I think that's probably, I'm probably done making her cardigan patterns unless she comes out with new ones, new crochet lace cardigan patterns. Um, the rest of them don't really speak to what I would, what me or what I want in my wardrobe, but they might speak to you. And she has crochet and knitting patterns, which I think is pretty fantastic. As I know many of you are knitters as well. So, I wish I had so much to show you. <laughs> I have the beginnings of two projects. And I do want to say that my secret project that I've been working on very diligently is finished. Um, it's not finished, finished, finished. <laughs> if you've been around the yarn space a long time, you know what that means. You mean, that means blocked and the ends woven in and like completely done. It is not, none of the ends are woven in. And actually that's a good thing because I'm going to unpick the border and add a couple more rows. I was making the medium size. It's a pattern, <laughs> spoiler alert. I'm not gonna tell you about what the pattern will be, but I will tell you it is a cardigan pattern. And I made the medium size because I'm on kind of a time crunch to get this out to testers. Hopefully by the end of this week, it may be one more week, I don't know. The, writing the pattern, I've never written a cardigan pattern before. I've only written like shawls and things like that is such a mind bender with all the different sizes um, because I'm writing it from a 30 inch bust to a 70. It's either a 70 or a 72 inch bust. Um, so to get all of the numbers correct is like, whoa. And then you have to do a schematic for that with all the measurements. Um, I'm going to, of course, have my row counters, which I have to make. And I have to like write the pattern in such a way that it's able to be easily understood, which is quite difficult. So I made the medium size, even though personally I would wear a large because I needed to get it done. And all the math works, everything works, but I do think this is something I'm going to want to wear quite often. So I'm once I finish writing the pattern and taking some photos, I'm going to unpick the border and the back seam and then add a few more rows to make it a large size because then I know I'm gonna wear it. And I'm really, really excited <laughs> for you guys to see this secret project. It won't be available probably until November or maybe right at the beginning of December, but I'm so excited I can't stand it. All of my time has been dedicated to this. The problem is I finished it, like I finished the crochet, and then I just was completely uninspired. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever finished like a really huge project and then like, it's like your brain doesn't even have room to be creative and any energy or creative juice that I had flowing was going, still going <laughs> directly into trying to write this pattern out, which is like super complicated for me. It's not a complicated pattern. It's actually very easy construction and design, um, but just writing it is very like mind heavy for me. And there were two days now, granted, I was on my period, so that is part of it. I was feeling not creative, but there were two whole days where I literally couldn't even look at yarn. I was like, I can't do this. I don't want to touch yarn. I do not have any crojo. I've lost it. I don't want to even think about crocheting or knitting. I just couldn't do it. And then after that, I wanted to, but I kind of felt stuck. Like I just didn't know what to do. I went like through my yarn stash and like touched all the yarn. Generally that like boosts my creativity. I just couldn't, couldn't do it. So you know what you need in these times is simple patterns. Things you can pick up, just start working on, something small, give you a sense of gratification. 
So <laughs> I started two things. One of them I'm like already regretting starting. Let me just show it to you. So someone that I know in real life gave me some yarn. She used to crochet and needle felt. She's moved on to other hobbies at the moment, so she doesn't need any yarn. So she gave me several kinds of yarn, but this is like, this is all Lion Brand Alpine Wool in, how much does it have? It's a bulky weight yarn, 93 yards for 85 grams. So she gave me six colors of this and then two balls of Freedom Wool, which is 50 grams, about 50 meters. This, it, this is a thicker, as you can see. So this is the color progression. So these are the other three colors. There's a dark blue, this light blue, and then a white, and the white is attached. So you may ask, what am I making? Oh, there's my crochet hook, it's five millimeter. I, this wool is much too wooly for me to make anything to wear out of. Um, and Nova needs like some storage solutions in her room for her toys. She needs, and, and out in the living room, in fact, <laughs> where some of her toys are. I, so I was like, I can make her a basket. Now, I don't think I've ever made a crochet basket. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have held this yarn double, but I didn't. I was doing it singly. So what I did is I crocheted 10 half double, there's no pattern for this, I, I wasn't following a pattern. I crocheted 10 half double crochets in a magic ring. Then I did one round right increase all around and then you just do the increases. So like half double crochet one, increase all the way around. Then half double crochet two, increase all the way around. I did that until I got to 10 or 11. Then I crocheted in the third loop to create this ridge and I just started doing half double crochets around. <laughs> I, the problem is, Look at how floppy this is. And the gauge is fairly tight, honestly, like it's tight enough to make my arm hurt. And that's typically why I don't do a lot of amigurumi because it, it makes my arm hurt. If this would just stand up the way it was supposed to, like this is kind of the shape of the basket, but it's very floppy. And I think like this is where the bottom is supposed to be. This is where it's probably gonna be in real life. It's just like, bleh. So I'm kind of at the point where I hate this project, um, but I'm going to keep going because I think I have enough yarn probably to get like this tall. I think maybe even taller. And if I have enough to fold over a portion of it, it will be much sturdier. I'm also thinking like, how can I jig this to make the base sturdier? I don't think this would have been a problem if I used the same size hook five millimeter and held this yarn double this would be really, really, really stiff, but as is, it's pretty stretchy. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? This is a rookie mistake, y'all. Rookie mistake. What I am thinking though is, you know, we get Amazon packages, so we have plenty of cardboard, is tracing the bottom of this, actually finishing it, putting it down, filling it with toys, seeing where the actual base lands. So is it on this strip right here or is it more like over here? Cutting out a circle of cardboard, the same size as the base, and then getting my hot glue gun and some fabric out of my like quilting cotton, out of my tiny fabric stash, and hot gluing fabric around this piece of cardboard to put in the bottom, and that will shore up the base, make it really, really firm. Um, and then of course, with this folded over at the top, the sides will be much firmer. I am I was going to make handles, like little handles on the top. I don't think I'm going to do that. It depends on how far, it folds over. If it folds over like the entire length, which I don't think it will, but let's just pretend for a second that it folds over the entire length. I may add handles. If it doesn't fold over the entire length, I don't think I'm going to. So I finished, this is two whole balls of yarn, the dark blue and the light blue. And now I'm onto the white. The only, this is the same kind of yarn, same weight of yarn, same yardage of yarn, everything. But this is a lot thinner than this one. Why? <laughs> I don't know. So the middle, it's a good thing I wasn't using this for the base, otherwise it would be really floppy. The blue one was pretty thick. So my plan is to go dark blue, light blue, white, then this color, then orange, 
then red. And then if I, depending on how big it is at that point, to do these two up top. Now these are of course thicker, so that actually may work really well for the brim. I'm not sure. We'll see. I don't know how, I, don't, I I'm at the point, like I said, where I kind of hate this project and I'm like, why did I even start this? But at the same time, because it is so mindless, I'm literally just half double crocheting in a circle. Nothing's happening except that. Um, I have worked on this the last three nights. Yes, this tiny amount of crochet has taken me three nights to complete. Oh man, I was gonna do so much crochet last night and guess what I did instead? I went to bed at 8.30. Nova went to bed at seven. I was asleep, like out to the world by nine. I'm so tired. <sighs> Someday it won't be like this, right? And it's not even her fault really. I mean, it's her fault in a sense because there's not really any downtime when you have a kid. And what I mean by that is she sleeps. So like, she's such a good sleeper. Unless something is wrong, she sleeps from about 7 or 7.30, usually until 6 a.m. or 6.30 in the morning. That's amazing. But like, from the second she wakes up until she goes to bed is like a mad dash <laughs> to get stuff done. So she's awake, I'm with her, I'm like doing stuff. Um, trying to work while she's around, if she'll play on the floor, etc. And then she goes to take a nap and then it's like a mad dash to get some work done and get house stuff done and get food prep done and find something to eat and like actually do my job <laughs> that I have. And so like that's a mad dash and then she's awake again and then it's just the, this cycle until she goes to bed at night. And then she goes to bed and I just lay on the couch and I'm like, like I can't even, <laughs> I can't even think I'm so tired. And I'm not nearly as tired as I was when she was a newborn. That was a level of tired I didn't even know existed. But it's almost like it's draining in a sense of like, I don't have a space to just be me. And of course that space is generally when she goes to bed until nine or 9.30 PM. But I'm tired by that point. So I'm just like vegging. <laughs> so I don't know. I assume pretty much every parent in the history of parents has this problem and I would not trade it for the world. I'm just complaining that uh, all I have managed to do in three days is this floppy part of a basket that I don't really like. <laughs> so there's that. Um, I'm thinking I also pulled out this yarn. It's two big old skeins of Red Heart number four acrylic. This is, I assume, just gray. What does it say? Color gray heather and this it doesn't have a label, but it's black. As you can see, I was going to make two baskets, one out of that and one of this. I don't know if I have it in me to make another basket when that one's done, but we'll see. I was thinking this yarn calls for a five or 5.5 millimeter hook. I was thinking if I crocheted, held it double and crocheted it with a four millimeter hook, maybe a 4.5, maybe, that that would be stiff enough for a basket. I don't know. We'll see. These are the only two balls I have in this color, so otherwise I would hold one more strand. I think that would work better. I don't know. I don't know. Why did I start a crochet basket? But I did, so it's gonna get finished at some point. And then, you know, that's a, I feel like a pretty good use of all that yarn. Another idea I had, I don't know if the basket's gonna be big enough, honestly, but We'll see when it's done how big it is. If it's really, really, really floppy and I just don't think folding it or inserting a base is going to work well enough, this is 100% wool, which means I can actually felt this. I can put this in the washing machine on hot and it sh and then the dryer and it should felt and shrink. And shrinking felt usually shrinks if you make your own like 30%-ish, I think. So that might be a small basket, but that could be totally an option. We'll see, we'll see. Stay tuned for updates. The other project I started, and I mean started like barely, barely started, a sock. I had just a little bit of car time over the weekend where my husband was driving and Nova was not losing her mind. <laughs> she hates the car seat. And normally it's a trial to have her in the car more than 15 minutes, but she wasn't, she was happy and she was playing with her toys. And so I got to start a sock. This is my sock bag. It's a rainbow llamacorn bag and I have the Knit Picks knitting, <laughs> knitting unicorn on it. 
Um, this is a bag from Slipped Stitch Studios. I have two of these. I have this one and then I have one with popsicles on it that Claudia of the Crochet Luda podcast gifted to me a long time ago, like a really long time ago. And that bag has been with me all over the world. Like that, these are my two sock bags. If you are looking for a sock bag, I want to say these are like 25 to 35 bucks. I don't know what price they are now because I haven't bought one in a while. I have had this for several years. I've had the other one for like four years now almost. And I do not have enough good things to say about this sock bag. If you're looking for a sock bag, go support Slipped Stitch Studios. I'll put a link to them down below. This is their little Slipped Stitch Studios. And they have this little guy right here. That's their tag. There are pockets on the inside of this. The drawstring is great and this handle is great. I have tried to use other bags for my sock bags. Don't look. 10% of how great this bag is. I love this bag. So what is living in here? Ooh, I might have a card actually. I do. I have the card from when I bought this. <laughs> That's their card, Slip Stitch Studios. And this is the Sock Plus bag. It has, this one's lined with purple and it has two of these pockets on the inside. So living in here is a ball of yarn that it is one of the only yarns, I think maybe the only yarn I bought while I was pregnant in 2020. I bought this and I was like, ooh, it's so pretty. A lovely viewer of this podcast like a long time ago had sent me a card with like a little cash in it. And she was like, I don't know what kind of yarn you want, but you go pick out whatever yarn you want from like a store around you. And I had actually saved that for like months and months and months. Cause I was like this, I'm gonna spin into something perfect. And when I was like seven, eight months pregnant, I went to my local yarn store, which is Stash, a place for yarn. And they had this, this is called Unique Sock. It's a hand dyed self-striping matching sock kit. So there essentially is two 50 gram balls of sock yarn with 220 yards each. And it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. This is the color 67. Every one that you buy of these plants a tree, which is cool. And this was $25, which I think is pretty good for some delightful self-striping sock yarn. This is the special thing that I bought. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> this is one of the balls. There's two 50 gram balls. This is what knit up it looks like. So each sock is supposed to be identical to this. I guarantee you I don't want a sock that this long, that's this long. And I started from this point. So this is actually the cuff so it's gonna go, I'm gonna imagine probably into the green before I stop the sock. I'm gonna make this kind of a tall sock, but not all the way up to my knee. That's too long. <laughs> Do you wanna see this tiny amount of progress? Oh, look how small. <laughs> so I cast on, I use the long tail cast on. That's typically how I always cast on my cuff down socks. And then I have done a approximately three rows of two by two rib. That is it. This is the tiny sock. So I will probably do 15, I'm gonna guess 15 rows of ribbing. And then I'll show you this ball. So I'm about to get into this blue red and then you can see the stripes. So it goes blue red, then it goes green purple then it goes pink and green, and then it goes into blue and orange. So, pretty excited about that. I did not have an, quite enough car time to get the ribbing done. Otherwise, probably more on this would be done because then I could just knit in a circle. Knit, knit, knit in a circle. <laughs> That's what I like about knitting is going in a circle. I don't really like purling or anything else. So, yeah my two projects. That's all I've done. I, it's not all I've done in two weeks since I've seen you. It's because I finished the secret project. So I have done more, but this is all I can show you. And yeah, that's literally a teeny tiny bit of sock and a weird third of a floppy basket that's probably going to get felted. I really need to be more intentional, I think, about scheduling time off for myself. I don't know. 
it's really difficult because before I was working two jobs. So I was working full time in a law firm and I was trying to run the church that I am a pastor of. Um, if you don't know, if you're new around here, I am the pastor of a small, inclusive, LGBT plus affirming church in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live, um, called Different Church. There's a link to that below always. And I was trying to run that, run the church, write sermons, work full time, 40 hours a week, drag the baby back and forth to the office. I don't have childcare. And honestly, like I wouldn't have been able to afford it anyways. Childcare is so expensive. And so I didn't, I just didn't have any days off. Like there wasn't, it didn't exist. So I would work Monday through Friday, take care of the baby constantly on Saturdays. Um, either my mom or my husband would watch the baby and then I would write a sermon and then Sunday is church. So that's work too. So like, it was just this cycle of like, whoa. And that is why I did not podcast for six months. It was just completely impossible. But since June, the beginning of June, I've actually left the law firm and been full time working for the church, which has been the most amazing thing on the planet. And hopefully that will continue to be, it will be at least through December. Um, and then we'll kind of see what the church's financial situation is at that point. Hopefully it will be enough to keep me on full time. And if not, then I'll find a part-time job somewhere. Um, and we, you know, we'll figure that out just like we figured everything else out. Um, but because I've only have one job now, which was like a million pounds of weight lifted off my shoulders. Like my stress level is 30% of what it was. Like I still have stressful days, especially if Nova's really, really cranky that day or like needs a lot of attention that day more than normal. But overall, like my life is a million times better having just the one thing to focus on. However, now I have something that I have never really dealt with before because essentially I'm working for myself. Like I'm the pastor of the church. I'm my own boss. And all of my jobs before I have been able to clock out and leave. Even if I was salary, like there was still a like sense of they're not paying me enough to care about this at midnight on a Tuesday kind of vibe. Like I, I was very good about stopping working when I was done with my work. But with this, there's no clear line. There's no like eight to five on a Monday and then I'm done for the day and I don't think about it until the next day. It's sort of in every part of my life. Like <laughs> on, on this Sunday, um, I got to church around 8 a.m. Church service was at 10.30. Then after 10.30, there was a get together. And then um, there was another thing that I attended after that. And so I didn't get home until about 5.30. Well, that's a full day, right? Um, but the problem is it doesn't necessarily feel like work, some of the things that I do. So like I spend time talking with people. I spend time texting people. People share with me like some really difficult things going on in their life. So sometimes I might be on the phone at 9 30 PM after everyone else in my house is asleep. I might be on the phone talking to someone who really needs help through a hard time. So, <laughs> or I might have a zoom meeting at like 8 PM on a Tuesday. And those things are technically work. Like if I am texting someone and I spend like a half an hour having a long text conversation with someone who just needs like some support, that is actually part of my job description. Like that's what I am getting paid full time for now is to be available to people who need assistance or just need an ear or have questions. But my brain hasn't really shifted to that yet. So my brain is still like, well, it's, that was, you were just actually spending time with someone that wasn't really work. So you still have to do this whole list of to-do list things that's just never ending. And so I'm having a really hard time turning off the part of my brain that tells me all the time you have so much to do. And, and, and the part of my brain that's like, how many hours did you clock this week? Because one week I might clock like 30 hours, right? And oh, whoa, 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 how great that you got paid full time for 30 hours. But the next week I might put in 50 or 60 because there are just the needs fluctuate. So being a pastor is like a different kind of a job experience for me. Um, Cause I'm not used, I'm not used to this type of time management and my brain is still in work mode being like reading, studying, um, computer work, things like that. We're actually like, I'm leading a small group tonight. Um, 
I'm going to prepare for that. I have a meeting with someone tomorrow. Like that's all included in my day to day work. All of that to say, <laughs> I need to be more intentional about taking time off. Um, and by time off, I mean like a day off every week. So I've noticed that I'm still doing some work every single day, Sunday through Saturday. Like I'm still doing at least something for work every single day. And I, I really want there to be one day where I don't do that, but I haven't done it yet. And part of the reason is because I feel bad <laughs> because Nova is with me all the time. So the only time that I have really good focus time is when she is asleep. And so if one day, like Monday this week, she just had an awful day and I think she just didn't feel good. Her stomach was bothering her. Um, she's, she's been a very reflexy baby. It has been getting better for sure. But Monday was just a really bad day. Like she cried, she fussed, she wanted to be held all day. Okay. So the only hours of work that I got in were while she was sleeping and she slept a total of four hours on Monday. So in my brain, my brain is like, Hey, you only really put in four hours of work time, which isn't true. I put in four hours of solid concentrated work time on Monday, but I worked also when she was awake, anytime she wouldn't let me hold her. And sometimes while I was holding her, I was doing stuff, but my brain's like, you only put in four hours of concentrated work time. So you have all these things to make up for. So you shouldn't get a day off. Like you should still be working on Friday this week. And I, I'm trying to really actively resist that. I haven't actually taken a whole day yet, um, but I'm going to. So like, for example, um, I will be taking Friday off this week. I, I just think I'm going to do it. I was going to take Monday off, but Monday I just, there's too much to do on Monday. I think I'm going to take Friday off. And then, um, next week or the week after my husband took a vacation day just to take one. Um, he has a few vacation days and you kind of have to use them up. So he's taking a day off. He just needs a little break. And I was like, I have two weeks of vacation time. Like I have it. I haven't used this. I haven't used a day. I mean, I just started in June so that I think that's normal, but like, I'm the one who writes the employee book. Now the employee handbook for this church, like I'm, it's me. And I want people to listen to me. Like I want people to take what I say. And what I say is productivity culture is not helpful for you. Like rest is an active act of resistance <laughs> to this capitalistic society that's like more, more, more. Everything has to be a hustle. Everything has to be work all the time. Like you always have to be doing something. This is very, very hard for me to not participate in the entire time I have been married, <laughs> which 10 years on the day that this podcast goes live, which is Saturday the 31st, my husband and I will have been married 10 years. July 31st is our 10 year anniversary. I can't believe it. But in the entire time, the entire time we have been married, um, I have either been in school full time and worked full time simultaneously, or I have worked two jobs simultaneously, or I have been in school full time, worked full time and had a part time job teaching at the same time, the entire time we've been married. There was one year where I was not in school. I was just working one full-time job and teaching like one class online. That was the best. <laughs> so my brain, my whole body is essentially trained to always be busy, to never have downtime. And honestly, it makes me a little resentful and it makes me like, <laughs> it makes me feel guilty too because at the end of the day, I'm exhausted, especially with Nova. I want to lie on the couch and not feel bad about that. Instead, my brain's like, well, she went to sleep, but you only got in X amount of hours of good work time today. So you really need to pull out your computer <laughs> so that you can get some more stuff done. That, no, no. I need to practice what I preach. And what I preach is your worth is not dependent on what you produce. Is what you produce valuable and important? Yes. Is it everything? No. So in December, like let's imagine a scenario where in December, the church's finances are not at a point where I can continue to be full-time for a different church. I don't want to look back on the last six months and be like, I worked 60 hours a week every week, or I worked 
every moment. I didn't ever take a day off because I felt like the church couldn't survive without me. And now that was just another six months, like at least in the six months, if it's only six months, I should practice what I preach. I should have a wonderful experience. I should be the best pastor that I can be. I should be the best mom that I can be. And I know that I need to rest to do that. So I don't know why I'm like rambling on and on about this. Like maybe one of you needs to hear this because I know I need to hear this. That rest is an act of resistance. Everything does not have to be a hustle. You do not have to work all the time. And trust me when I say I'm not telling you this from a place of like, I got this and you don't, you need to listen to me. I do not have this. Like for me, if I take, if I can get Friday and just not work on Friday, that it's going to be really difficult for me not to do any work on Friday. Like so incredibly difficult. And yet it needs to be done. It needs to be done. You are not just what you produce. Like I am not just a pastor, even though I love it. And it's like my favorite job that I've ever had. <laughs> this is like what I was designed to do. I love it, but that's not the only part of who I am. I love being a mom and it's amazing and it never stops. But that's not the only part of who I am. Like you deserve to have space for your entire person and your entire existence. And if you can work it out, take a day off. I know there are seasons where you don't get one for months at a time. And I have been there this year and many other years. You just keep going. You do what you do to survive. Um, but if you can work it out, like take a day off a week. Do something that restores you, that recharges you. And if you're a pastor and you work on Sundays, yeah, you need to take another day off. So that was a very long-winded, <laughs> long-winded explanation of my life, I guess. <sighs> I do want to say thank you so much to everyone. Like some of y'all have been with me for years. Like this podcast is four, is it f over four years old now? It's definitely over four years old. Maybe we're like four and a half years. That's crazy. That's crazy that it's so old. The podcast is almost, yeah, I'm going to go with four and a half years old. And some of you have been here since the beginning. Some of you have been here, like a lot of you have been here for a really long time. And I just appreciate y'all so much. Like I love doing this. I'm so thankful that you all stuck around for six months while I did not upload a single episode because of trying to work two jobs and have a newborn just completely overwhelmed my life. Like I appreciate that you're still here. It means like the world to me. And I appreciate all of my patrons. It's Wednesday, the 28th when I am recording this and it's 9 a.m., which means in three hours, we are having our patron monthly get together on Zoom. And it's basically like a knit night. <laughs> Last in July, we did it at night. Um, and then today, today, is it July? No, in June. <laughs> what am I saying? In June, we did it in the evening. And then in July today, we are doing it at noon in the middle of the day because there are people from across the world. So I'm really excited to have like a virtual knit slash crochet space with the ladies and Nova might actually be asleep for part of it. So I might actually get some crochet tied in, which is crazy. So just like, I appreciate y'all so much. I know I don't have a ton of yarn content, but I do have one more thing to share with you um, because part of my job, so exciting. Part of my job as a pastor now is that um, like I need to study, I need to be able to read and get some information input into me so that I have something to put out. Um, so I've actually been able to read two books. One of them is, I don't have it next to me, but it's called Love Matters More, Why Fighting to Be Right Keeps Us from Loving Like Jesus. I, it was a great book. In fact, I based two sermons recently on it. And I just finished a second book that I've been wanting to read for ages. It is a faith-based book, so if you're not into that, totally cool. But if you are into this kind of thing, it's by Sarah Bessie, and it's called Jesus Feminist. It says, an invitation to revisit the Bible's view of women. And let me tell you why I love this book so much. She, I was going wrong, going along. I like how she writes. It's just like really beautiful, totally fine. And then I get to chapter seven. 
And chapter seven is about her journey to becoming a mom. And she talks about her miscarriages and she talks about the birth of her baby and she talks about God. And I was not expecting to ugly cry in the middle of reading this book last week. I, and I was literally like Nova was asleep. I was reading it at the kitchen table, just like crying my eyes out. It's beautiful. I'm going to cry right now. Just thinking about it. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I'm not even going to, I'm not going to read parts of it because I will cry. Um, but if you have access to this book, uh, you are a person of faith and in any sense, or in any part of your life, you feel like God maybe has forgotten you or something like that. Get this book, get Jesus Feminist and read chapter seven. If you are a mom, because it, it was exactly what I needed to hear last week or read, I should say. And it's beautiful and amazing. And I loved it so much. And I just want to read from the very end. She has this kind of prayer. Um, and it's a prayer that's like a whole chapter, basically. But I'm going to read one paragraph. And I think I'm going to use it as the closing prayer on Sunday, actually. But this is what it says. I pray that the God of hope will fill you with all peace that passes understanding. I pray that you will be drawn into a community so rich, so deep, and so diverse that you will disagree and fight and remain together anyway. I pray that you will bring casseroles and prayer and laughter and tears to one another. I pray you will have your toes stepped on, your feelings hurt, and that you would forgive. I pray you will be given the gift of realization that you were wrong about some important things and that you will be quick to seek forgiveness and make it right when you have done something wrong. I just thought that was really beautiful. So that's what I'm reading. I just finished that book yesterday. Now I have to think of a new one. I'm thinking maybe some Richard Rohr. Richard Rohr is like a kind of con contemplative, mystic, um, Catholic writer. Um, sometimes his books are like drinking from a fire hose, honestly. Like I have to go really slowly. That is a skill that I have is like taking things that other people write that are possibly complicated or hard to understand um, and putting them into normal people words. I have many things that are not on my list of skills, but that is a skill that I have, which I think is why I'm good at being a pastor and preaching on Sunday. But yeah, I think I'm going to read some Richard Rohr because he is pretty great. So I don't know how to end this now. I've just been talking and talking and talking. <laughs> this is what you do when you don't have any yarn content. You just ramble for 42 minutes. <laughs> I guess... I will say, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, you can always hit subscribe down below and then you'll be notified when a new episode of this podcast goes live on the channel. Um, we are nearing a hundred episodes, which is crazy to me, crazy that we're nearing a hundred episodes. I will have a hundred episode giveaway thread when that happens. I do have some lovely prizes that people have donated. So I will be happy, happy to pass those along. We'll probably have two prize packages. I think I'll have to go through my stash. We're nearing a hundred episodes. <laughs> oh my gosh. And yeah, I think I'm going to call it a day here <laughs> and sign off and see if I can get this edited and uploading before Nova wakes up. She's been asleep for one hour so far. She's been taking like hour and a half naps in the morning, so I should have a little bit more time. And I think honestly, instead of scrambling to get some work done in the next 30 minutes, I'm gonna to try to edit the podcast and maybe get a little bit of yarn time in. And you should too. So until I see you again, happy crafting, and I will talk to you soon. Bye friends. <laughs>